You're listening to the Mother to Baby podcast. Medications and more during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Ask the experts with your host, genetic counselor and mom of three, Chris Stallman. Welcome to another episode of the Mother to Baby podcast. My name is Chris Stallman, and I am a mother of four, a genetic counselor, and a teratogen information specialist. And teratogen information, for those of you who don't know, is um, information about exposures during pregnancy, breastfeeding, before you're pregnant, if you're thinking about adopting. And by exposures, we mean anything. So it could be medications, it could be nail polish, it could be COVID-19. Anything and everything is on the table. And we actually have a special episode for you today, a continuation of our last episode about COVID-19. It is now April, 2020. And as I'm sure it is for the rest of you, um, the world for those of us who work with mother to baby is very, very different than it was even at the beginning of this year. A lot has changed. Um, a lot is still unknown at this point in many respects, but what we're going to talk about today are, um, COVID-19. If there are any updates in terms of pregnancy or breastfeeding, and then actually something that's really connected to COVID-19, something we're coming in contact with more and more often as the quarantine and lockdown downs go on, which is maternal mental health. With us today, we have returning guests, Kirsty Parada from our Mother to Baby California affiliate and Lori Harris Sagatabai from our North Carolina affiliate. Ladies, thank you for coming back to the show. And how are you today? Doing well. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having us, Chris. Glad to hear it. I will say, though, um, listeners and to guests, that we do have um, a secondary host of sorts in the house today. Uh, My daughter, Ava, is home from school, like many hundreds of thousands of kids across the U.S., and I just wanted to invite her in to say hi. Hi, everyone. Hope you're staying healthy out there. Thank you, Ava. Um, And I, too, am enjoying um, the unique opportunity to be a high school teacher, um, something I didn't even know I wanted to do. So, yeah. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Okay, so on to the heart of it. Um, Kirsty, Lori, can we have a brief reminder of really COVID-19 in general? Sure. Yeah. So um, COVID-19 is an illness that is caused by a virus that's in the family of coronaviruses, and it's a respiratory illness. And the most common symptoms that we're seeing are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. But as we get more data about the virus, we're also seeing other symptoms like fatigue, Um, GI symptoms like diarrhea and nausea, and loss of smell has been reported by some people. Um, And we know that some people have really mild symptoms and they can stay at home and treat at home, um, and that's great, whereas other people have more severe symptoms and need to be hospitalized. And then, of course, some people have no symptoms at all. There's, There's no treatment for the virus. You can treat the symptoms, but there's no cure. And currently, there's no vaccine. So pregnant women in particular, if they suspect that they could have COVID-19, if they exhibit any symptoms, they want to make sure they contact their health care providers right away um, and get recommendations on how to treat their symptoms, particularly if they have a fever. It's really important that they treat a fever, especially um, if it's early in pregnancy. And if they would like a little bit more information about um, fever, in pregnancy, we do have a fact sheet on our website at mothertobaby.org. We have a fact sheet about hyperthermia, um, which is increased body temperature. And there they can read a little bit more about um, hyperthermia and pregnancy. And I think what's changed mostly since we last recorded with you, Chris, is just the number of cases that's occurring across the country, across the entire world. And of course, a lot of communities and states are now on lockdown. So people are being told to stay at home as much as possible, shifting to work from home um, opportunities when available. And that has really added a lot of stress. It's increasing rates of anxiety and depression for some people, which I know we're going to touch on. 
Yeah, I think that's a good point, the the stress and anxiety piece of it. And Lori, I know you mentioned uh, pregnant women. I want to just sort of stick into, you know, if you're breastfeeding, especially if you have a little, little one and you think you have symptoms or someone in the household does or hopefully not, but in case you think your baby does, please contact your child's healthcare provider. And that way, if there is something special that they want you to do, then they can guide you through that as well. Right. And as far as pregnancy itself, we still don't have a lot of information about the possible effects of the virus in pregnancy. Um, We're still not seeing evidence that pregnant women are more likely to get COVID-19 than other people. Um, We're also not seeing evidence that they are more likely to get very sick with COVID-19 compared to other non-pregnant adults. Um, And at this time, we really don't even have clear evidence that the virus could pass to the baby during pregnancy. Now, very recently, there was a report that came out um, of three newborns who became sick and tested positive for the virus shortly after delivery. And this was a a study that came out or a report that came out from China. Um, And all three of those infants were delivered by C-section. And so it is possible that they were infected during or shortly after the delivery, but because the timing of their infections was so soon after delivery, it really introduced the possibility that the virus could perhaps pass to the baby before delivery if the mom is infected. Um, Reassuringly, all three of those infants recovered from the virus, Um, But it just means that there's still so much more to learn about um, the way this virus could affect um, a woman during pregnancy as well as the pregnancy itself. And Lori, like you said, there's a lot of unknowns, but the good news is that people are starting to research this a lot. So at Mother to Baby, we actually have a new study that's looking at COVID-19 infection um, prior to pregnancy, within a month before your last period, during pregnancy, and also while breastfeeding. So we are currently enrolling women who think they may have had COVID or currently have COVID into that study. And hopefully we're going to be able to learn a lot more um, once we get that data. If women are interested in learning more or participating in this study, they can visit mothertobaby.org and click on join a study, or they can call Mother to Baby Pregnancy Studies at 1-877-311-8972. Excellent. That is so cool. I'm, I'm not surprised that you know, we're doing a study, but I know that a lot of people are looking at this and hopefully we'll get some answers. Not as soon as we all want, that's true, but you know, there is some, some research being done. So that's definitely some good news in our world. If you're interested in participating, the study consists of a few phone calls over the course of your pregnancy and after delivery. And if you're breastfeeding, providing a sample of your breast milk. And then participants would also sign a release of their medical records that are related to the pregnancy and to the infant's development. And that's all, that's all that's involved. The study is just observational and women are asked to do anything different during their pregnancy or their breastfeeding than they would normally be doing. Okay, so moving on to the next segment, I wanna start with a little bit of personal disclosure. So I love my home, I love my kids, I love my dog and my husband and I am going stir crazy. Um, We just officially in Arizona have been issued the stay at home order. So we're in now for the duration and I know that they have a date in mind, but you never really know. And the thing is, everybody here is wonderful and we all love each other and we're in really close quarters. Um, I have one child in the school system, so we have to do at home teaching with her, which is interesting to say the least. Um, but we're really grateful that we can. And that in turn um, ups our usage of things like internet. And so, which has gotten slower, (laughs) not just for that, but like for streaming devices and stuff like that. And hopefully you're listening to the podcast and not hearing too much interference or dropping your connection or feedback. But unfortunately it seems that the COVID-19 virus also may be breaking the internet. Um, And really what that sort of leads into is our state of mind. So obviously there's a ton going on. You know, there's, there's a virus, of course, and all of the ripple effects that that has 
started off. You know, some people are losing their jobs. Some people are having trouble with their bills. Some people are stuck in the house and, you know, can't do some of the things that they used to do to relieve their anxiety, their tension. So like, you know, going out with a friend or going to a movie or for a long walk in a park or something like that, you know, we're being told for our own safety to socially distance and to stay at home. And for people who have anxiety and depression already on top of this, really what this is is a new world. This is a brand new world. And we're all trying to figure out how to navigate our way through that. And it must be much more difficult when you already have something like anxiety, depression, some kind of pre-existing condition. And so my question to the two of you ladies is what questions are you getting from the public? You know, what are people asking about, you know, anxiety and depression and stress and how that affects a pregnancy? Are people asking about their medications, you know, if they should keep taking them, if they should be changed, you know, what's going on out there? Great questions, Chris. And I can definitely relate to you. I've been um, stuck at home with a two-year-old for the past three weeks trying to work from home and take care of him. So it's definitely a stressful time. And I know a lot of people with kids as as well as other responsibilities are struggling right now. So I think um, feeling anxious, feeling stressed is uh, something that a lot of people are experiencing. And we've noticed an increase in calls, in chats, and texts um, related to these concerns. So like you said, a lot of women who are already on anti-anxiety medication or antidepressants um, have questions about continuing those in pregnancy. And then of course, we have people with new diagnoses of anxiety because of everything that's been going on that are wondering, how do I treat this? Do I need to get a medication? Do I need to start talk therapy? Should I make an appointment, um, an in-person appointment with my doctor to talk through this? So that's really what we've been seeing the past couple of weeks. And it's really important that women reach out to us with these questions because if they're feeling that their anxiety or their depression is strong enough to really be interfering with their daily life, it really is a good idea to find a way to manage it. We know that untreated moderate to severe mood disorders can actually increase the chance of pregnancy outcomes like preterm delivery or low birth weight. Now that doesn't mean that if you have, you know, short-term stress or anxiety related to being stuck at home, that your um, baby is going to be born too soon or have low birth weight. But if it's an ongoing condition and it's really affecting your daily life, it is important to find ways to manage it, whether that's with a medication or with other options such as counseling. And there are a lot of therapists that are offering virtual virtual counseling right now. So getting this kind of help wouldn't necessarily mean that you have to leave home. But it is important that you talk with your healthcare provider so that you can decide what the best plan will be for you. And Lori, you touched on untreated mood disorders in pregnancy, but we also want to make sure not to forget about women that are breastfeeding that might have anxiety or depression because that's really important to treat as well. Um, We want to make sure that you are in a good mental state so that you can connect with your baby and care for your baby. That's so important, especially in those first couple weeks um, post-delivery. And Kirsty, I see your breastfeeding and I raise you a preconception. Um, if you are already diagnosed or again, you know, there may be, there's probably going to be a lot of new diagnoses in the near future, you know, and you're taking them and you have questions about, can you continue during pregnancy or into breastfeeding? You know, again, please feel free to contact us and something else to keep in mind. You know, there's been a lot of jokes on the internet that, you know, try to inject a little humor into our daily lives. But what I've been seeing for a while is up, just wait nine, 10, 11 months. And we're just going to have a rash of pregnancies because people are home together (laughs) for a long time and, you know, don't have a lot of entertainment options. So things like taking your prenatal vitamin, even if you're not trying to conceive, 50% of all pregnancies in the U.S. approximately are unplanned. And so um, eating as best you can, which we know absolutely can be challenging, but just sort of keeping that in mind. And Chris, that's also really important when we consider alcohol. Um, You know, some people may consider relaxing with a glass of wine to be a really good way to unwind. But if you, certainly if you're pregnant, you don't want to be drinking alcohol, but also if you could become pregnant, you know, the statistic that you just gave us that about 50% of pregnancies are unplanned. So really important to avoid alcohol during that, that time period um, if you could become pregnant as well. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, what about exercise? That I've been okay with, I'm not gonna lie, um, but that's because it's not yet 115 degrees here in Arizona. So what about that? Are you getting questions about that? What's the stance on exercise at this point? Yeah, so exercise is something we tend to get questions about all the time, but we have had um, some more specific inquiries about it lately as it relates to coronavirus spreading in the community. So definitely, you know, important to exercise during pregnancy. Of course, it's always a good idea to check in with your healthcare provider just because they know your health history best and what underlying conditions you might have that require you to limit um, certain exercises that you can and can't do. Um, but yeah, it's definitely important to stay active during this time. I know that can be really hard when you're stuck at home, but even going for a quick walk around the block, staying six feet away from everybody else, getting a little fresh air is going to have a, a positive um, benefit for you. Yeah, and, and not everyone can walk out of their front door to a safe, accessible place to exercise, even in the best of times. So it can be really challenging to exercise right now when so many parks are closed and other areas like walking trails might be so crowded that it's virtually impossible to stay six feet away from yourself and the next person. Um, but there are a lot of free workouts online right now that are being offered that aren't normally offered. And really, for the purposes of, of boosting your mental health, it does not have to be the latest or greatest or most body sculpting workout. We're talking about just doing something that you enjoy that gets you moving. So even mild or moderate exercise right there in your living room with your kids, with your cat, with whomever it may be, that can really help not only your fitness level, but also your mood. Lori, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, of course, like everybody else, for the most part, I've been on the internet probably way more than I should be. And I've seen things like, you know, I'm going into quarantine, a caterpillar and coming out a butterfly and, you know, don't get that quarantine 15, you know, in a reference to 15 pounds you may gain while you're not able to really leave your home very much. And you do you within safety reasons, please, everyone feel free to, to be your best self, but this is not a competition of any kind. It's really just so you can hopefully, you know, feel a little bit better. Like you said, I think the mental health thing is so important. It, 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 it helps you stay healthy too. I think it's good both ways. So if you do anything, you do some light yoga if you want to, there's lots of stuff online. If your internet is spotty, if you don't have internet, which unfortunately is, is, what it's coming to in a lot of situations for a lot of different reasons, put on the radio, dance, something, you know? Like you said, it's not always safe to go outside, which is unfortunate, but there are some other alternatives that can usually work for most people. And I'd like to just take a step back for a second because I jump topics, you know, my mind's going everywhere. I'm actually super excited because I'm talking to two other adults right now. Woo! <laughs> this is. <laughs> I never thought I'd I'd miss it as much as I do, um, <clears throat> but in the idea of talking to people, so you know, it's I don't think much has changed in the fact that sometimes women are prescribed medications to take, and you know they're told by their healthcare providers, you know these are in your best interest. It's a good idea for you to take them, but you know there's not always a lot of clear information out there about a specific medication in pregnancy or breastfeeding, and it's scary. You know, so, so what about those ladies? You know, we definitely want to talk to people who have these questions, but what are you fielding on the phones and in chat and in email and text at this time? Right, so we get these questions all the time, even when there's not a global pandemic happening. Anxiety and depression are still very common and it does happen during pregnancy and breastfeeding. And there are so many different medications out there. It's tough to be able to kind of give a blanket statement on a podcast. So it is always best to call, speak with one of our counselors and make sure that you get information that is specific to your medication and your situation. Um, but you know, what's really important is just weighing the risk versus the benefit. Fits, right so the the potential risk of um, not treating your mental health like Lori mentioned earlier things like preterm birth and low birth weight can happen if the mood disorder is serious enough um, versus the benefit of taking a, a medication and that's something we can kind of talk through um, with you over the phone or over chat as well certain medications of course do come with risks 
with um, neonatal adaptation syndrome, which is commonly called withdrawal, is something that can happen to babies when moms take certain antidepressants um, later in pregnancy, but it is a, a manageable condition. And so we would definitely kind of go through what to watch out for, what to tell your doctor, um, and again, weighing those risks versus benefits is going to be really important. And it's not just anxiety and depression. You know, we, we are certainly not saying that these are the only two conditions that need treatment. There are many, many, many conditions. And even within mental health, you know, people with bipolar disorder, for example, or schizophrenia or, you know, something else, whatever questions you have, just know that we're still here. We, for the most part, I believe most of our affiliates, if not all of our affiliates are not physically in an office, but mother to baby is still open for business. And so we're still taking phone calls chats, texts, emails. So we're still here to, to talk or to write or to text or whatever it is. So we definitely encourage you to contact us with your questions. Okay. And actually, Kirsty, you touched on something before also about um, appointments. And so I'm sure you ladies are getting those requests as well about should you continue to keep your appointments and, and what's the consensus? Yeah, so it's, it's definitely a question that comes up a lot. And in most cases, it is going to be very important to continue to keep your appointment, especially if you're having a problem like increased anxiety and you need to talk to your provider about that. I mean, that's something that really should not be put off. That said, um, Chris, like you mentioned, there are going to be certain protocols in place. They may have you come at a different time than you normally come, have you not come with your children or your partner text when you're outside, you know, all these new ways that we're trying to um, limit our exposures because doctor's offices, of course, tend to be filled with people. And so we're, we're trying to make sure that you're not coming into contact with other people that could potentially be infectious. Um, telehealth, telemedicine is another big trend that's rolling out right now. So sometimes prenatal care can be done virtually, which is great because that way you can still get your questions answered by your doctor or your midwife, um, but you don't have to actually be seen in person. Person, so that's great. Um, but definitely some appointments you do have to go in for, right? So if you need a vaccine, for example, or an ultrasound, that's not something that we can do over the phone. Um, so bottom line there is just that you need to call your doctor's office or your provider's office. They're going to tell you what the protocol is and the safest way for you to continue with your care. Okay. So before we sign off, because we are coming towards the end of the podcast, there is something else that I wanted to mention just because it's the world we live in and there are people who need certain resources. And so in times like this, when there's severe distress, obviously skyrocketing unemployment, financial troubles all around and being stuck together, we see an increase in incidences of interpersonal violence. So things like domestic violence from a partner or spouse, things like child abuse, animal abuse, elder abuse. It is very, very unfortunate, but it is something that we come across and something I felt was really important to address today. So there are some resources that we wanted to share. So Kirsty and Lori, could you talk a little bit about those? Um, yes, on our website at mothertobaby.org, we have a fact sheet on trauma in pregnancy. And also related to some of our other topics, we have fact sheets on stress and depression and anxiety. Um, and you can read those there on our website. But in case you need other kinds of assistance, there is a national domestic violence hotline, and that number is 1-800-799-7233, or you could just Google domestic violence hotline and you can find that number. And there's also a national disaster distress helpline that offers crisis counseling and emotional support 24 hours a day for anyone with mental health concerns. And that number is 800-985-5990. Um, or again, you can just Google um, National Disaster Distress Helpline. So those are resources that it's good to have um, in case you need them. Thanks, Lori. I hope those do come in handy for people who need them. So I know that the two of you ladies are in regular life, you know, before in quotes, I guess, um, were constantly busy, overachievers, um, excellent at your jobs. And so my guess is that this podcast is not the end of it. I heard musings about a blog about COVID-19. Can you give me some information on that? 
Yeah, so we're working to put that together right now. I think it's going to be really helpful for people that contact our service. And it also talks about some of the related concerns that we're hearing. So cleaning products is a really big one. You know, people are wondering how to keep their homes clean and, and keep the virus out. So we've been getting a lot of questions about that. Um, and then also delaying of certain procedures and essential services as well as people that are calling us with questions about supplements to help with immunity or keep them from getting sick. So those are kind of some of the other questions we've been getting, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail about those on the blog. Um, And then lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about occupational exposure, and hopefully that's something we have another minute to chat about because I think it's so important to address. Um, Healthcare providers right now are are taking the brunt of this pandemic, and they are really um, the the true heroes in all of this, but that doesn't mean that they are not affected, right? They also have increasing rates of depression and stress and anxiety and all these things we've talked about. So, you know, same information, of course, if if you're a healthcare provider and experiencing any of these issues, it is just as important that you reach out to your doctor um, to get assistance as as soon as possible, because we know that you're dealing with a lot right now. And we just want to make sure that your mental health is prioritized during this time. And I think, too, that there's a lot of leeway when we say things like essential services. Of course, we know hospitals, healthcare, um, facilities, grocery stores, stuff like that. But they sent out a list recently here in Arizona what constitutes an essential business. And some of the results were surprising. Um, And it wasn't just healthcare stuff. It was stuff that I thought possibly could have been put off. Um, I'm not sure, but... I think the greater point that you made is very well taken. And the idea is that whoever you are, you know, if you're facing it, if you're a janitor, if you're a hairdresser and they say you can keep your salon open and you're concerned, if you're anybody with any concern about how COVID-19 could affect you, your pregnancy, breastfeeding, or if you're trying to conceive, then please feel free to contact us. Okay. Well, Kirsty and Lori, thank you so much um, for your time. I know that, you know, even though we're all at home for the most part, it's still not easier with all the other things going on. You know, even people who don't have additional family members in the home at this time, it's a huge disruption to our world as we knew it. So thank you very much for your time. And what would you like to leave our listeners with today? I'd just like to remind everyone about the resources that are on the Mother to Baby website. We have a section that is dedicated to mental health, and you can find all of our mental health-related resources at mothertobaby.org slash mental health. And we also have a previously recorded podcast um, that focuses specifically on maternal, maternal mental health. So you can also find that on our website. And if you don't find the answers that you need, please do reach out to us. This is why we're here. We want to hear your concerns and we want to answer your questions related to medications and anxiety and other types of exposures during your pregnancy as well as in breastfeeding. I just want to thank you again, Chris, for having us on. It's always good to be able to chat about coronavirus and what's new with this outbreak. We do still have a lot of unknowns, and I think that's the reason why there's so much stress and anxiety for people that are planning pregnancy, currently pregnant, or breastfeeding. Um, So I'm really hoping that we're going to learn some more, both from our mother-to-baby study as well as other research that's being done. And as we learn more, we will definitely be updating our fact sheet. So again, that's available at mother-to-baby. Org. Um, so if any new information comes out about how this uh, virus could potentially affect a pregnancy, um, a developing baby, or a breastfed infant, we will definitely have that information on there. And again, I just want to say that I empathize with everyone out there who's um, struggling. You know, I think we're all in very challenging situations right now um, and just trying to do our best. And of course, remember to wash your hands. Yes. Yes. Please remember to wash your hands. And, you know, because we mentioned that things are changing, although not in leaps and bounds, but, you know, things are a little bit different than they were even yesterday. And so we will be updating all of our resources. So I hope that means that you ladies will consider coming back for another recording if um, if we have more things to talk about. Definitely. Absolutely. That sounds awesome. Okay, so just a couple of final thoughts from me in this day and age. I'd like to say, please feel free to take a break from media, news, social media, online stuff if you need to. Um, I am now an every other day news person when I was a quite an avid 
reader of all news, including the good old paper newspaper. So feel free to do that. And on the other side of that, when you are ready to go back to the internet, you know, you can feel free to catch up or even re-listen to some of the other Mother to Baby podcasts that we've done. As Lori mentioned, we did have one about maternal mental health. That was episode four. And there are episodes that we would love for you to take a listen to. You can join us online at mothertobaby.org if there is some information that you would like to have. I know that Kirsty and Lori mentioned that several times. I don't think it could be said enough personally because online you are going to be able to find our fact sheets. You can also find out how to call us, how to text us, how to email us if you want. And an email could be a question about an exposure or something you heard on the podcast, or it could be a question or a request about something you want to hear on the podcast in the future. So that email address is contact us at mother baby.org. Our toll free number is 866-626-6847. Our text number is 855-999-3525. And so for all of us at mother to baby, I want to thank you again for joining us in the future. I promise that we will have different topics to talk about, but right now this is important. This is what's on our minds and this is what we wanted to bring to you. Not just some information, but just the open ended invitation to please contact mother to baby when you want, however you want. We would love to hear from you and talk to you about whatever concerns you may have. So this is Chris Stallman signing off, wishing you the best of luck, the best of health, and a reminder that Mother to Baby is here for you. Take care. Mother to Baby is a service of the nonprofit organization of Teratology Information Specialists and supported by the Health Resources and Services Administration of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It's made possible through generous donations from listeners like you. To learn more about Mother to Baby, please visit mothertobaby.org.